Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. All right, so I'm Anna. I'm an alcoholic. Um, thank you, Hillary. Hi, Anne. Thank you, Hillary, for asking me to speak. Uh, I somehow got it confused that I was supposed to speak today, so I spent like the last 24 hours actually preparing and then re- like thought that I, and then was like, oh, I guess I'm not. So God works in, in wonderful and mysterious ways also, um, which is so funny because I was so sort of worked up about it and in alcoholism. And then I had this whole free afternoon where it was like, oh, I'm not speaking. And then it was Hillary called and I was like, oh, I am. It's a good thing that, uh, that that happens. So it's really good to be here in a primetime meeting. And uh, primetime is AA. I was in non-primetime AA for a number of years, for about four and a half years. And, um, you know, really, I was sober and I was dying from alcoholism. And I, I didn't know what alcoholism really was. I thought that I did. And um, what I found is that, uh, is that I didn't. So I was suffering from, from a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, a lot of, um, you know, neurotic, repetitive mind, mind function. Um, and so when I came to prime time, I, I started to learn about what the disease of alcoholism actually is. And, uh, this is outlined, you know, in Bob Anderson's work as, as well as in the big book, to some degree, but it really is a neurotic mind function. So, you know, when I wake up in the morning, if I start to pay attention to this, I have thoughts going on in my mind that are telling me usually like what I think that the day is going to be, what my ego is telling me like, oh, okay, today is going to be really stressful. I might not make enough money today. Um, you know, it's a lot of stories about why not. It's a lot of stories about how how the world is, about how I am, and about how I'm going to fail, or the world's not going to give me what I want or what I think that I need to survive, um, and that it's going to be a struggle. And, uh, you know, growing or, or living with this mind all the time and not knowing that this is alcoholism I tried a lot of different things. I tried a lot of different medications. I tried many different therapies. I tried, you know, yo, different yoga classes, uh, Chinese herbs, like you name it. I I ran the gamut. Um, really trying to figure out what was wrong with me. Um, and at the same time, I was, I was in mainstream AA. I was, and there's nothing wrong with mainstream AA. Just for me, for this alcoholic, I couldn't hear the message for some reason. I needed it in this specific way. And so, you know, I was going to multiple meetings a week. I was sponsoring women. I was, I had a sponsor. And, um, and the truth is, is that I, I was constantly struggling with suicidal ideation. And yet I was being told, uh, just, you know, keep doing more service or, you know, do another round of the steps or, you know, uh, maybe you need to do X, Y, Z. And, um, I hit a really gnarly emotional spiritual bottom over the summer. And what happened was that God intervened in my life and, um, in my ego, all these ideas that I had about how I was going to fix myself, about how um, I was going to, you know, fix what was happening in my brain. Because even though I couldn't really name it, I didn't have the language for it. I knew something was desperately wrong. I felt in my being something was so deeply wrong. And I was searching and not finding. And so I had this moment where I reached an incredibly low bottom and what happened was in sobriety is that my, my mind opened. 
I was completely, you know, out of, out of good ideas, out of ideas around how to fix myself. Um, and right at that time, I heard one of Astrid's speaker tapes, um, her emotional sobriety tapes, and it was like a light bulb came on in my mind. Um, and suddenly I started to get this language through prime time about what alcoholism is, that I have a, a self-talking mind. I have a mind that talks to me all the time, that I'm thinking that you're thinking things about me, that everyone hates me, that they think I'm doing a bad job. Um, you know, I can even think that right now. I can even see, you know, my mind working like that right now. And, you know, so I come, I come into AA and, you know, I think that the problem is in the pills and the, the drinking and the, the car accidents. And, you know, for a little while, like when I got sober in the beginning, it was like, okay, maybe things are going to get better at these things, these substances that are, you know, mind altering, mood altering are uh, out of the picture. So I think my life is going to get better. But the reality is I'm living with a mind altering, mood altering ego <laughs> that uh, is, is not going to let that happen. So I have to I have to, I realize in step one that, you know, I'm powerless over alcohol, drugs, et cetera, et cetera, that, and that my life is unmanageable. What is my life? My life is what my mind is telling me about the world and about myself all day long. That's completely unmanageable. And, you know, uh, in the beginning and, and also, and well through my, through sobriety, you know, I only wanted to give up the drinking and the drug thing. I really wanted to manage and control the rest of my life, my relationships, my work, my finances, um, you know, the kind of car that I drove, the type of place that I lived. Um, I really was in, hey, hey, um, in what, sorry guys, in uh, what Harry Tebow talks about uh, is com as compliance. So I'm willing to give up a, a little part of my life or, what I think is causing the problem, but I'm not in a surrendered state. I don't really understand that in order to have complete freedom and, and, and peace of mind and peace of being that I have to have a, an internal surrender to a power greater than myself. So, you know, these are all, are, are all concepts that I, I found in prime time and, you know, and I'm, and I'm very, very grateful for everyone here that has um, taught me and, and all of the literature and Sermon on the Mount and realizing that I really, my mind creates my, my reality. And, um, you know, I can either be with God or I can be with, with self. And, you know, today I'm, I'm having a kind of a hard day um, with, with my mind and what it's telling me is like all sorts of stuff about, you know, why I'm not good enough and that, you know, things are not going to work out. And today though, I get to have a, you know, a different experience. I get to pray and I've had, I've had pretty miraculous uh, results from scientific prayer. And Emmett Fox talks a lot about scientific prayer and, and what I've found that to be and what he talks about it in Sermon on the Mount is the practice of the presence of God. So what that means to me and is that I can, I can get in the secret place in my heart, in my mind, and I can speak to the power. I can invoke the power. I can say God is with me right now. Um, God is healing me. God is healing the world. God is shifting things around in a way that is maybe totally incomprehensible to me, but in a way that is ultimately beneficial. I can, I can practice the presence of God through med meditation and contemplation. So I can read something, you know, from Sermon on the Mount, or I can listen to something like one of Bob's tapes or Astrid's tapes, and I can get into my heart and I can get quiet in my body 
and I can start to notice if the presence of God is at work, if my, my, you know, blood pressure goes down, if I start to, the thoughts start to slow down and I start to have a different experience. It's like suddenly the things that I'm so worried about don't seem so big. The, the stories that I'm telling myself don't have as much power. Um, the thing that I, you know, was obsessing about, you know, whether that's something like drinking today or thinking today or, you know, what's going to happen next. It starts to calm down. I start to develop a, a, an experience of trust and having a new a new experience in the world. And so for me, the biggest thing, like I said in the beginning, um, when I came to primetime was like the suicidal ideation. And that was a repetitive thought that I had over and over and over again. And every time that I started to have that thought, I started to practice the golden key, which is from, um, from Emmett Fox, which, you know, I had a weird resistance to. It's kind of like learning how to walk with new legs or something to go from this really narrow minded, obsessive, repetitive mind function. And then for someone to read this thing, that's, that's telling me, well, this will be fixed if you just turn your attention to God, if you stop thinking about the problem. And for me, I had this moment in the beginning where I was just like, is that really going to work? And so I have to put it to the test. Like I, I can't rely on what you're telling me about it. I can't, I can't get something from your experience, even though it may help me. I need to have my own experience with this. So I start every time I have that thought at the beginning, oh, you should just go kill yourself. Oh, this seems like it's going to not go well. You know, I go, okay. I, I recognize that I'm having the thought that my life is unmanageable. And then I come to believe that a power greater than myself can restore me to sanity. What is sanity? Bob Anderson says that it's soundness of mind, and I agree, but I also think it's soundness of being, right? Like when I'm in alcoholism, my being is not sound. It's not just my mind. My entire being is offline. My entire being is frenetic. So I really want to be restored to soundness of being, to soundness of mind, to soundness of heart. And so I start thinking and, pra and, and using scientific prayer. The minute that I notice I'm having a repetitive mind function, I start to go, okay, God, please be with me. And, I, and then I say, you know, I start claiming spiritual truths about God. And I, like I said in the beginning, I didn't think this was going to work. But it really relieved this repetitive mind function of you should go kill yourself, right? There was... And, and I have tried, like I said, every other thing. And yet doing this practice, using the golden key for, I don't know, one to three minutes, 20 times a day, or however often I had the repetitive thought, within a few weeks, I would say, I didn't have the repetitive thought anymore. And that's after years and years and years of, of this type of thinking. So, you know, lately I've been, I, I've been thinking a lot about and sitting a lot with, with what's going on and, um, you know, how, how we talk in, in, in AA uh, as alcoholics with alcoholism and, um, and how we got here and, and why, why I, have this disease or, or what that means. And, you know, we talk, we talk a lot about, and Astra talks a lot about trauma. And I think that that's a big part, a uh, major and a uh, ma uh, major, a uh, major part, major part, you know, very well off, but um, n in some ways, very dysfunctional. Um, and I, I've been sitting with what's been happening in the world and, and I was looking at the ego factors earlier and, and, you know, that we're all as alcoholics, we're always in a hurry. Um, we're omnipotent and, um, we don't, 
handle frustration well. And I was thinking that, you know, in contemplating this really, that maybe to think about the, my childhood ecosystem creating my alcoholism, which is definitely a big function, you know, what I've been reflecting on is that in a lot of ways, and this is just my belief, but we live in a world that is, that is an alcoholic world. Um, we live in a world, many of us, I mean, that is omnipotent, um, that is in a hurry, that handles frustration poorly, that wants more and more and more and more at the expense of our health, our air, our planet. And, um, and it's brought up a tremendous amount of, of grief in a way, right? Like that we, you know, yes, we have alcoholism and we self-medicate in this certain way. And at the same time, um, you know, this ecosystem that's dysfunctional on a family level is also, in my opinion, pretty dysfunctional on a world level. And if I think about the suffix, like dash ism, dash ism, you know, I was looking that up earlier, and what that, you know, the definition for that is an oppressive and especially discriminatory attitude or belief. So with alcoholism, I'm living with something that is an oppressive and discriminatory attitude or belief, but I also live in a system, you know, where that's pretty rampant. And so there's a lot of internalization that has happened of that. So, you know, lately I've been just contemplating all of this and sitting with it and thinking like in this new world, or, you know, I've been feeling the gravity of the third dimension and um, how heavy it's felt. And I think for a lot of people, it's felt inescapable, um, especially during this time. And I know when I was drinking and drugging, there was that sort of heavy feeling. And so I got to this place today where I can see that my mind is in this obsessive place and then I'm getting this closing in feeling, which was a feeling I felt literally all the time before I got sober and, and incrementally less in this sobriety and since finding prime time. And really, whatever is happening in this third dimensional plane, you know, with the planet and um, with the economy and with what's you know happening in, in individual lives and 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 more widespread, I came again to this conclusion to this, I guess, spiritual axiom which we're taught here, which is that the only solution is spiritual. That if I'm looking for the world, for the third dimension, for the job or the um, to be able to make sense internally of myself or to give myself relief based on what's happening externally, I will never get it. I can search to the ends of the earth. I can try to, you know, mold what I think the outside world should look like right now so that, it, so that I might be able to relax for a little bit. Right. But, but the truth is, the real truth is the world is ever changing. I'm not omnipotent. I'm not, I'm not the, you know, captain of the universe, even though my mind tells me that I am. And thank God I'm not. I, that would be probably not end very well. But that whatever is happening outside of me and inside of me, the only solution is God. I'm never going to find peace of being from my mind or from a person, place, a pill, a thing, 
anything. So, you know, that's about it. All I've got for tonight. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your shares and thank you for having me. You can call on anyone if you want, if no one's going to raise their hand. If there's anyone you'd like to call on. You're muted. Yeah, Anne, do you want to share? Hey, Anna, my name's Anne. I'm an alcoholic. Thank you so much for your share. It was good to hear you. Yeah, when we talked earlier today, I didn't know you were going to share tonight. Um, you know, the Tebow papers, I haven't been able to find my Tebow papers. And I, I think it's time for me to read those again. So thanks for mentioning those. Um, so um, I'll just do a little check-in. Um, I've decided that I'm going to, I'm packing up and moving to Florida for a couple of months. Because um, my, <laughs> my place to live here is ending and um, I'm not, I'm, I'm no longer needed in the service position I have. And my job has no, I have no way of knowing when my job's going to start. So I don't have a place to live. And um, I've been talking to my aunt for the past couple of weeks and she needs some help with her house and her business. So um, I'm feeling guided, you know, to go be of service and to do the next right thing. So I'm selling all my stuff and going to pack up my car and leave in a week for Florida on a road trip. And um, so I'm, I'm starting to get excited, but I, I got to admit, I'm going through a lot of grief. I'm having trouble packing. Like, I have all these great spiritual books that I've read, and I, I need to just let them go. I mean, if they're supposed to come back to me, then they'll come back to me. But um, I'm, I'm so grateful for these Zoom meetings and to know that even on my trip and when I get to Florida, I'll be able to get on the Zoom meetings. And um, I feel like, um, you know, a lot of us are, you know, there's like a collective feeling that we're all having. And then there's our individual journey in what's happening. And my individual journey has been so much about what does my alcoholism look like? What is my old character? What is my new character? And, you know, the old character is a lot about victim mentality. And, um, and I just, um, I don't know. I just, I just see where I get to put Anne first. And I've never really thought of it that way before. I always have a tendency to want to meet your needs first. And then if I meet your needs and you're dependent on me, then I'll have a place to be. And we're putting the, the focus on myself and taking care of myself is actually scary because then I'm going to be all alone, you know, but I'm not alone. I have, I have a God of my understanding in my life and I've learned to work step one, two, and three around my thinking. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I don't know what the word is, but I, all this stuff I'm learning, I'm taking it on the road with me. <laughs> and, uh, it's so wild to get rid of all my shit, man. It's like, you know, like I've got all these books, like this is a good book, right? But I don't need it. Like if I, I just don't need it. So it's really interesting to just go through my stuff and just fit in my car what I'm going to need in the next couple of months. That's all I really need. One more minute, Anne. So one more minute of life. So thanks for letting me share. It's so good to hear you, Anna. I love you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks, Anne. John, do you want to share? Okay, yeah, I'll share. Um, I'm putting the timer on. Wow, that was really good, Anna. Thank you. I... I got treated, and uh, and it was hard at first because um, it was hard to get on here. I had the wrong ID and uh, all this really texting back and forth. What the ID? Ah, oh, God! And oh, and we need a timer and blah blah blah. But um, but wow, I really I really heard a lot in um, your share, and you you only shared twenty minutes and and you were done and you were good and and that's all you needed to do and and um got a lot out of uh what you said um the you know prayer uh, uh you know it's like uh and your 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 talk about you know the 
the the golden key and and how how you know is that that gonna work for me you know I remember that that's exactly how it was for me I I I got that little pamphlet at one of my early primetime meetings and took it home and I said I, I did I you know you can read through it in one minute and and I uh, read through it and I said ah oh, that's not gonna work for me and and um, I put it down for a year and then and then a year later I, I picked it up again because I had to and and it was completely a different experience and um because I had an open mind um to trying it you know just to try but but you were using uh this word that I haven't really heard a lot suicidal ideation I think um I I I was very suicidal uh years you know a few years into sobriety I haven't been for the past five or more years at all um you know I had a panic when this first started a couple of weeks ago a couple of mornings I woke up in financial panic um but I've got this way of life and and it really works it makes it makes the day possible it makes it makes um life possible it makes um makes a good day possible uh like before the solution this way of life was in my in my day um if i woke up in the kind of panic i had uh, not only would i have a bad day but um that's you know that was the only thing that was possible period you know the only thing that's possible when you're panicking is uh is um um a panic unless there's a a solution and um so i'm going to give myself a 1 minute warning um and uh um so so you really talked about yeah the problem the the uh, that crazy mind of mine um you know that judgmental uh mind but the surrender um god if i can only surrender to to what i've got which is what i what it is today and put my hands up in the air and and uh get out of bed with that financial fear and and meditate i today i did it different i i i did it completely different today for the first time in months i meditated first and then uh and then i read or wrote and then i read and then i prayed and man it's been an amazing day like uh i this pause button that i'm on man did i need it and um but i i'm feeling the pain of everybody that's out there uh cuz uh it's my pain too and um and uh like you i i'm looking forward to hearing everybody else and thanks for thanks for uh showing up uh tonight anna cool thanks john um i phone dustin i'm going to unmute you oh okay Can you hear me? All right, I'm just yep. an alcoholic. Um thank you Anna for your share. I relate to everything you said and um I love what you're talking about. I mean, I love what you're talking about surrender. I'm trying to, you know, I have my moments of surrender and I'm looking for a lot more moments of surrender. <laughs> um I love what you talked about there's really only one solution, you know. God, you know, practicing the presence um cuz that's everything I'm about right now is trying to rely on a power and scientific prayer. I read a lot of Emmett Fox. You know, um Golden Key's awesome. I've had Yes, okay. I'm here. Uh, we didn't hear I don't, I don't think anybody heard the last uh minute or two. Go ahead. Yeah, I, my phone just got completely disconnected. It's back now. Um, I guess where I left off was like so I did that for about a week, you know, and I was l- literally in the present, like practicing the presence, you know, and it was like an innocent belief, you know, where I just I was able to do it. And literally every like my, my the inner peace I had was expressed on the outer, you know, it was amazing and I've always been tr- I'm always trying to get back to that, you know. So when you when you talked about the answers God um that's what i need to hear you know and um 
and that's what I'm going for, you know? Like, whatever the problem is on the outer, inner, whatever, the answer's the same. Relying on the power. The answer's gone. Thank you for letting me share, and thanks, Anna. Thank you, Justin. Tenzing B, I'm going to unmute you now. I'm Tenzing Makahoik. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you, Anna, so much for your share. Um, feeling um, very nervous right now, um, but um, I also feel treated. I um, really liked a lot of things that you sh that you talked about, um, especially related to um, sound being. Um, because I've experienced sound mind, I've experienced sound being, and I also experienced me being just um, reliant on not my higher power, but on myself or other external things. And it's literally a physical experience for me also. Especially when I, I know it, especially since I have tasted days and moments of feeling treated it's like zooming into the moment for me. Um, and uh, I also really appreciate how you talked about prayer. Um, for me, I also re I realized how, you know, I've always had these different types of anchors of kind of just not um, getting lost in the world or in my day. Um, that was alcohol and drugs for a long time. Um, but, um, and I really appreciate that you brought that up. It's also been obsessive suicidal thoughts. And I remember, you know, sometimes I even, while I had them, I doubted how much I actually wanted to die. It was more like, you know, in order to live, I needed to go to that place. I needed to go just to the really dark place where I've made myself feel terrible in order to feel some sense of security, to somehow feel grounded. It's a really perverse paradox for me. And now um, in recovery, and especially since I've um, been learning about the prime time method, um, and just also since I've been really working the steps close um, to the big book, um, I, uh, I noticed myself acting myself, acting not unsimilar when I notice my ego creeping up and I notice myself going to self and being in fear. Or like now, for example, I'm a little bit in fear and I could just like try and rush to God. And that's what I used to do. I rushed to these anchors. I try, you know, like, oh, okay, this doesn't feel good. It feels uncomfortable. Even I, you know, I have the one thing I am have left with. I'm left with is kind of, you know, I still rush to food and TV. Um, You've got one other, more minute. You've got one more minute, Tenzing. Thank you. But this rushing to this anchor it doesn't work for me. That's where you know where I just like kind of blossomed into self. And it's the same with prayer and being with God. I need to like, I just need to calm down. And thank you also for thinking about the world at large and so on. And for me, I just was thinking, you know, I think I'm also grateful that I have the ability to register these things outside of myself. But it's the same thing. I think it's page 67 that I have to apply here where in a big book where I, you know, there, I have a disease, but I'm also confronted with a lot of uh, sickness all around me and maybe even on a glo global scale. It's important for me to stay on my side and not to take the world's inventory, so to speak, um, but just be loving and caring. So thank you much, so much for your share. Thank you so much, Tenzing. Beautiful. Renee, do you want to speak? Hi, guys. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Renee. I'm an alcoholic. Um, I'm really happy to be here, and I'm happy to see some familiar faces. Um, and every time you speak, Anna, I'm just reminded of, of all my bedevilments that, um, I'm 
not that good at articulating or identifying. Um, I, I, I still get really like easily swept up by, um, by my thought life. Um, and I forget that there is an exit strategy and, um, I just forget. I mean, and I've been going to news every day <laughs> and I still forget. Like, um, I was just saying to Hillary, like, I'm, I've just been having trouble concentrating, um, since we've been home. And, um, I mean, my concentration is required a lot for the homeschooling that I'm helping my kids with. Um, and once I'm sort of done with that, uh, I just, I, it's like, I can't really read. Um, I'm not too interested in much. Like I just, I don't feel poorly really. Um, I just am neither here nor there. And, um, maybe that's just where I'm supposed to be in, in this, as somebody said, like living in the pause button right now, um, to, to be neither here nor there. Um, I have, uh, like Tenzing was saying, I, I've had, you know, just years and years of the suicidal ideation, like you, like you have too. Um, and then once that sort of goes away, it was replaced a lot of times by the thought that I wanted to drink. Um, and so I have to, it's like, I have to create those new neural pathways. Um, um, like Tenzing was saying, like, sometimes you're having the thought, like, like I'll be having the thought, oh, I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink, fuck it, you know? But I don't really believe it. Like, I don't really like in the bottom of me, like, really want that it's just like a neural pathway that's telling me like that's that's where the relief will be um so i have to manually override those thoughts you know and be like but that's such bullshit like i don't really want to do that it's just i don't like what's happening right now you know and today it was like I ordered a new phone from Verizon and like, you know, there was like an email mix up and like, you know, it's like so stupid. One more but minute. It, you know, One minute. thank you. Thanks, John. Um, you know, but by the end of the hour long exchange uh, to figure out what that whole. You just got muted, Renee. I don't know. Uh, Oh, I think maybe you muted uh, yourself. Oh, weird. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Wait, you muted yourself again. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what okay, I'm doing sure. now. Anyway, uh, by the end of the Verizon exchange, I was just like ready to drink, supposedly. Um, but I wasn't. It was like, you know, I was three minutes away from soundness of mind I just had to like ride out the impulse to go get in the car and I do it like all the time like daily you know I'm I'm overriding the the silly thoughts um anyway it was really great to hear you I don't have any solution to share for anyone but um I sure I'm glad to be here bye thanks so much Renee so anyone else who, would, oh, we have a Galaxy Note 4. I'm going to unmute you. Hi. Can you hear me? It's a little hard to hear you. I don't know if you can make your volume a little louder. Um, does that help? Yes. Okay. Microphone. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm an alcoholic. I uh, normally live near Boston, and uh, I'm visiting my mom in New York for the pandemic festival. I really appreciate your sharing. It's good to hear Emmett Fox being talked about so much. It's um, something that I was introduced to when I was very new was Emmett Fox and um, a guy that was not my sponsor but acted like a sponsor gave me 
one of Emmett's books and I really treasured it and I had it for years and I gave it back to him just a few years ago and then went out and bought my own copy. Um, I was thinking about recently about how so much of what I heard in my early months still is the best stuff I ever heard. One of the most important things I heard was your best thinking got you here. And thinking about the second step and how there's a polite inference in there that the people on this program are insane, or at least come that way. And it's been really important for me to contemplate that possibility. And a few years ago, I realized if I'm insane, I will not have the idea of what sanity is. So how am I going to know how to orient myself or be in charge of that, uh, that pathway? And that's really when I realized the importance of a higher power, when I realized I was not going to restore myself to sanity. And tonight I've been thinking about one of my favorite passages that was um, that I was directed to read when I was very new on the program, which is, is from the doctor's story. And there were the pages on, of accept, on acceptance, and he talks about, I used to think being an alcoholic was the worst thing that could happen to me, and today I find it's the best thing. So if I can't know what's right for me, how can I know what's right for anyone else? And at the time, that was given to me because I was filled with ideas about what was right for everyone else. But in the time since then, I've come to realize I don't know what's best for me. You know, for many years, I was also suicidal, and that's a pretty good hallmark of insanity. I think that's sort of a baseline thing right there that points out to me I'm not really qualified to be making the decisions uh, for where my life should go and how it should get there. And luckily, there is a higher power and a program that gives me some great direction. And my higher power, regardless of what name I use for it, it's consistently the characteristic of my higher power is truth. And I notice that all my problems stem from a lack of honesty that there's some area that I'm not being completely honest with myself or others. And that's, that's where the problems come from. One when more I minute look for truth. Thank you. When I look for truth and the great thing is this program is filled with people who, uh, you know, see what I'm doing and thinking and saying, and can often point out where I'm in error. And I realized a while ago, the way the world changes for me is when I discover where I'm wrong. If I can discover where I'm wrong, then then life can change, not when other people change. And I think I'll conclude by saying I have less expectation of what my life should look like and less demands on on life of how it should perform and how my life should look. And I've been blessed to have um, many friends that have died in various ways that I love very much, and their lives were very incomplete and not lives that I would necessarily choose for myself. But my love for them and the recognition of their wholeness and completeness um, has relieved me of the burden of having that expectation that I need to be something other than what I am in this moment. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.